what's next for you, Chris? I mean, you're on the path of health right now. You got the podcast, you're helping people out. Anything else on the horizon? I mean, uh, just continuing with that content uh, in terms of that, trying to make it as, um, I mean, I keep trying to expand it. So I write, I do a sub stack, uh, which is an article. Right now I write an article every month. I do, I, I have a book recommendation every month, which is around sort of mental health or just kind of even sort of physical stuff, um, chronic illness or ways to think philosophy, that type of stuff, anything that would relate to mind fitness. Um, I keep trying to figure out ways to expand that to get more content out there. I've got some ideas. I don't want to let them out of the bag yet, but um, because right now it's all free. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at some point it'd be nice to have a subscription model to that because it's always uh, nice to monetize on things. It does cost me a lot. It's it's uh, a lot of work. People don't realize that those free newsletters are never really free for you, meaning a lot of time. Yep. Now, all that being said, like I realize people are being subscription to death these days. And so I try to. It's one of those, it's a little bit of a yin yang, like, you know, figuring out a way where it's not going to break somebody's bank, but at the same time, you know, there is a lot of work that goes into it. So then the podcast is part of that too. I do like one to two podcasts a month. I'll put those on YouTube as well. They're on all the streaming platforms. Um, I've got a challenge that's on the website. It's like a 20 day challenge of sort of beginner's mind fitness type things. And then I started, uh, actually, I released one yesterday, I started recording kind of like meditations that mm. for me to use too, just my own things because there's meditation apps out there there's and those are good a lot of them are great but i have kind of things that i do that i think people might like to try so we'll see i don't know how far that thing can go but i hope it it helps people you know right now like i said most of it's totally free so yeah check it out what i've learned is is you do these things a lot of times for other people it's really therapeutic for yourself too oh absolutely yeah. right like i've realized yeah. that i started this podcast you know a few years ago <laughs> i was really against it at first and people were just like yeah just share it and i was like all right i'll do it for everyone else in the end it was for me it was for me to connect to certain people get certain you know ideas and even hear things that i needed to hear and get things out so yeah I, yeah, I absolutely. find it to be incredibly therapeutic also for that mental side of like, all right, a little fearful of this, like lean into it, become stronger that way, but also understand this is all part of the journey. Yeah. And for me, it's also encouraging other people to speak up as well. Yes. Right? Like whether it's other veterans or first responder, whoever, it doesn't really matter, but having them feel comfortable speaking up. And that's, you know, and it doesn't need to be about, like for me, a big thing is like, I'm not really interested in talking about my active duty military time. I think that that's protected information that shouldn't be public. That's my own choice. However, I think the veteran experience absolutely should be talked about. Mm. It's not military time. It's a totally different subject. And it's important because it's going to help other veterans. Yeah. And I think that that's so critical. And to your point, yeah, I learned things along the way too. Podcast guests I have on, they'll teach me things that I wasn't tracking on. I also find that when I write articles, I almost learn as I go. I'll have an idea generally of what I want to say, but when I really put it down on paper, I have to think through the actual argument I'm making and make it cohesive and cogent. And it'll help shape my thinking. Like by the time I'm really done with the article and publish it, I have a better idea of like what I was actually thinking on there. You know, it's, it's just more structured. That's the beautiful part of, I think, writing in general. It is kind of taking this and applying it and putting it out and then analyzing it again and seeing what what is right or wrong with this or even how can I improve on it? What are other counterpoints of it? Starts to really expand your mind. Then you open up to other possibilities. So I think just writing in general, like you said, journaling, not easy for some, but absolutely beneficial. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Chris, yeah. where can people learn more about you? Website, social media? Uh, so website is rarsense.com, yeah. R-A-R-E-S-E-N-S-E.com. Um, and that's got links to kind of everything on there. You can probably go around the various, you know, Spotify or iTunes or whatever and just look for Rare Sense with Chris Irwin. Uh, is the podcast, the Substack, again, is linked to the website, but rarsense.substack.com. It's free to subscribe currently. so please get on there while that's still, <laughs> still the case. Um, and then I guess like across the, I'm at this Chris Irwin, like any of my social media stuff. I don't do a ton. Of, I'm not the most prolific social media person. I find a lot of it destructive Good for you. Yeah. on most things, but I did that mainly just to block off that, um, that handle. So I had it across everything. 
I do post things to Instagram. I'll repost it to Facebook and LinkedIn, but that's mainly where I do it. And it's mainly just sort of letting people know about like the latest article that came out. Yeah. So I'll put a video up that's kind of talking about things, but yeah. Yeah. I will say create content. Don't consume it yourself, right? Don't become consumed by social media. Create it, put it out good. there for the world. Yeah. Don't don't consume too much because a lot of it yeah. is a little poisonous and toxic. Well, I mean, certainly some of it is good and there are, there are oh, good yeah. things that are out there. The problem is you just can get completely down a rabbit hole and just spend your time scrolling on things where you're it's just completely useless. And it's designed to be that way, right? Absolutely. Let's be honest. It's designed to be addictive, yes. which is not a good thing. But Chris, man, thank you so much for coming yeah, on, sharing your definitely. story and being, you know, forthright, honest, vulnerable, all these things. It's it's really, really important that we look at our mental health, especially for the veterans, because you're right. I mean, so many struggle. So thank you so much for your work. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And thanks for what you guys do. I mean, it's been helpful in my recovery journey. So I tell the girls there, uh, I'm, every time I leave, I'm like, I hope I never see you again. But <laughs> I love it. That's, but I'm that's what more patients should be saying, right? That's, yeah. It's kind of what my father got into it because he kept seeing them over and over when he was in conventional medicine. He's yeah. like, I'd like to not see you again as much. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like, so you know, it's I a testament of where medicine many, should but, be. <laughs> but I really hope I never see you again. <laughs> Well, I hope I do see you again on positive in notes we get to share. But yeah. yes, I hope I never see you at the clinic also. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much again. And as you heard, with the increasing amount of mental illness in America, it should be commonplace to seek treatments and help that actually work without breaking the bank. Fortunately, people like Chris are changing the way we think about mental health and bringing useful interventions to the mainstream. Until next time, continue writing your own healing story.